My name's Tom Jennings and this is the 24 Frames cast and I do have to apologise. Um, there has been um, a three week gap between episodes. This was partly due for the fact that I had completely forgotten that I was um, going to America for a couple of weeks. Um, Had a fantastic time. I visited the real Zabriskie Point, um, got shouted at by some Russians, which almost led to an altercation with some American war veterans. But I can confirm it is beautifully bleak, and um, I felt I was kind of winning some kind of nerd points by going there. Um, I have come back, and in the time I've been back, I have been incredibly unwell. I don't know whether I've had COVID, man flu, a cold, or whatever. One thing's for certain, I have realised I am absolutely terrible when I am ill. I am moody. I am a complete drama queen. I am on the mend, however, and... Uh, was very keen to get back to recording. So I have kind of come up with an episode. It's going to be a little bit shorter than um, uh, the previous ones, but I thought it'd be uh, kind of on a topic which I kind of think people might be interested in. So if you, like me, have noticed that by the time you get to the end of the month, you are almost always skint, it might be because of the amount of subscriptions you are currently paying out. I know I certainly spend a good portion of my money on them. And what I'm going to hopefully do in these episodes is help you navigate the world of um, online streaming subscriptions. I'm not going to be talking about the obvious ones like Disney, um, Netflix and whatnot, because We've probably all got those and they very much speak for themselves. It's the little niche ones, though, which I'm going to be talking about on these episodes. The ones that you suddenly think, oh, do you know what, I'll give it a try. And uh, you probably never get around to watching or you suddenly subscribe to a bunch of them and realise they all add up. So hopefully I am going to help you pick amongst the wheat from the chaff. And I am going to be starting by having a look at Studio Canal Presents. Now, firstly, the most important things. This one will cost you £4.99 a month. It is a monthly contract. There is no need to pay some kind of annual fee, which to me, I think, is always a complete bonus. Um, You can subscribe to the app through either Amazon or Apple. There is no standalone app, and I can confirm that if you need to, you can download content onto whatever device you're using. So what do I like about Studio Canal and what do I dislike? And I think I'm going to start with the latter first. Now, Studio Canal is a producer, distributor and rights holder of a huge film and TV catalogue. So for the love of God, give us the lot. And yes, I know I am being greedy. But still, the selection available could modestly be described as being the tip of the iceberg. Despite owning the rights to almost all the Jean-Pierre Melville films and Birch and Tavernier back catalogues, with the exception of Le Cirque du Rouge, every other Jean-Pierre Mel film is absent, um, despite being available on Blu-ray from Studio Canal. Um, There may well be rights issues and indeed the need to protect physical media sales, which I think is perfectly reasonable, but for the cinephile in me, I would love for Studio to Canal to have gone all out. And like I said, I might well just be being incredibly greedy. Next up, I think, is how the films are organised. They are very vague genre categories. For example, drama has just about every other genre known to man underneath it. You can see all the films in the catalogue if you click on more details in the menu, but there is no A to Z order, and it means a lot of scrolling to find what you want. And although new titles are added, there is a, there are no notifications a way of actually seeing what films have been added. You essentially have to find them yourself, and it can be a bit of a faff. However, that would be it for the gripes, and possibly this might sound a little bit contradictory, But I want to begin my praise by actually talking about the selection of films that are in the catalogue. Although it's only the tip of the iceberg, it's still a pretty good selection that Studio Canal has put out. There are a few sub-labels to its Blu-rays, most notably its classics selection. And 
mostly these are films made in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s. And they normally retail on Blu-ray at around 14 99 and at their very cheapest will reduce to about 10 99 And although there may be some omissions, the classics title on the app are pretty much all there. Indeed, I typed in Studio Canal Blu-ray on Amazon and tried to find missing titles in the app, and I was hard-pressed to find many that weren't there. And contemporary, or at least relatively recent titles, are in there too, including, of course, the modern classic Under the Skin, and one of my favourite recent films, Another Round. And if you have the kit, then... Some titles are in UHD or HDR, and those titles tend to mirror the Studio Canal um, HDR physical media releases. So we have Peeping Tom, Cross of Iron, The Wicker Man, The Pianist, all are there to be enjoyed in HDR. Um, I did compare both the streamed HDR version of Cross of Iron along with its physical counterpart, and although a decent enough upgrade on the stream 1080p version, it was still noticeably less sharp than the disc, which of course is pretty much the norm when comparing streaming with physical media. Overall though, the quality of the streams are pretty great, both in HDR TV and on the 1080 breed projector upstairs. There were no visible issues to note. Of course, there will be some compression, but if I were none the wiser, I would be fairly certain it was the Blu-ray I was watching in all cases. Sound-wise, where applicable, you do get 5.1 surround sound, and playing a few scenes from the likes of Apocalypse Now, Fidelity and Clarity was more than up to standard. And it's not just films they have too. There's obviously some TV offerings. Um, They have every season of Hannibal, the Red Riding trilogy, miniseries, and the likes of Pillars of the Earth. Overall, the Studio Canal app might not have all the titles I wanted, and the cataloging options are annoying. But at $4.99 a month, this is more than enough for any cinema file to enjoy without the commitment of an annual contract. You can duck in and out at will, I, for one, really do enjoy this app. And if more titles continue to get added, then all the better. If you do decide you're going to take the plunge, here are a few of the films that I could recommend checking out. Love Cecil is an excellent documentary. Love Cecil is a excellent documentary about the photographer and clothes designer Cecil Beaton. Next up would be The Lofts City of Z. If you haven't seen it already, I strongly recommend that you do. And a film which this is going to sound a bit of a bizarre one. It's called One Life on the Limit. And it's a documentary narrated by Michael Fassbender about Formula One safety. Now, when I watched this film, I had absolutely no interest in Formula One. I since have developed an interest in Formula One and motor racing in general. But you don't even need to be interested in the subject. And this is an absolutely fascinating look at the men and the machines who, with zero consideration of their safety, uh, would fly around tracks and often pay the ultimate price before someone very rightly decided that all this needed to end. Um... Steven Sodenberg's Shea films, part one and two, these did not receive great reviews when they came out. And I did revisit them um, relatively recently. And I think perhaps, I know Sodenberg himself said he didn't enjoy making these films and perhaps I have Father Fallen by the Wayside, but definitely well worth a look. Um, 71 was one of the most stressful films I've watched at the cinema. It's about a soldier who gets lost in the troubles in um, Belfast uh, in the titular 1971 is a kind of nightmarish thriller of a soldier trying to make his way back to home lines. I can't imagine there are many people who haven't seen Akira Kurosawa's Ran, but it is here. It does have a UHD presentation. Um, It's always had a slightly ropey um, home cinema history. Uh, This does appear to be the same transfer news on the Blu-ray, but I certainly thought it looked pretty great in HDR, so do check that one out. Villain is a Richard Burton 1971 gangster film loosely based around the lives of the craze. Um, I have the poster, which is one of the best film posters ever made. I, I would recommend this film with the caveat that afterwards you go to therapy because it is 
genuinely one of the most miserable things I have ever seen. Next up as well would be a film called Music Box. Um, I'm going to recommend this film. It's a, written by Joe Esterhouse about a man who is accused of being a Nazi war criminal. And the reason I'm going to recommend this film is because it is a textbook example of how not to write a film. And I know that sounds a bit of a bizarre thing, but sometimes I think it's actually worth watching films that are quite flawed so you can better understand um, what makes good storytelling. And this film was kind of interesting for a bit until the screenplay just completely loses the thread. And um, I did actually recommend it to a friend the other day who's a writer, and he was like, yeah, it, it was a timely reminder of how not to do things. Um, my Journey Through French Cinema is a documentary made by Bertrand Tavernier in which he looks back at French cinema and what it means to him. It's very long, it's about three and a half hours, I seem to recall, but it was one of those where it was quite a nice film to watch and make uh, get some suggestions for uh, possible v- film viewings. Melius is a look at the life and filmmaker John Melius. I absolutely loved it. It really made me um, want to go back and watch Red Dawn, which I don't care. I have kind of a uh, guilty pleasure soft spot for that film. If you want a more by-the-numbers look at the Dunkirk evacuation, I would check out um, Leslie Norman, father of the famous film critic... Barry Norman's uh, 1958 film Dunkirk, starring John Mills. I, th- I think it's a really underrated war film, actually. I, I, it's, uh, I know it has its detractors, but I, I, I did certainly really enjoy it. And it's, it's one of those, I, 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 I call it a kind of a bank holiday film, which I, I guess is kind of a cliche when it comes to war films like that, but it's definitely uh, has that kind of vibe for me. And last but not least, I would check out A Bigger Splash, the Luca Guardino film. Um, doesn't quite get the love as kind of his latest efforts, but um, I've, I, I watched it. I was quite taken with when I watched it the first time, and watching it a second time, I was even more fond of it. Um, I think it's kind of ripe for a rediscovery, and I just love Ralph Fiennes in this film, which is something I don't normally do. So that's going to be it then for this roundup of why you should um, subscribe to Studio Canal if you want to. Um, I will be back next week with another episode now that I am fully on the road to being 100%. Many thanks for listening and I'll be in contact soon. Bye.